Hi all. Um, I am recording this. Um, I was planning and hoping to do this as a Facebook Live, but I'm not really sure that I want to post this video. I guess I'll decide a little bit after I record it. Um, so, um, <laughs> I've been struggling over the last week or so to come and do a video about this because I've been pretty emotional. Um, it is now early June. I believe today is June 6th or June 7th, um, 2020. And just as you all may know, the events of the last week or so have been, um, pretty, um, it's been an emotional week, um, for many people. And I've been sort of struggling to decide whether I wanted to do this video or not. And those of you who know me well know that I'm not really, I kind of hate cameras, I hate pictures, I hate videos. And um, over the last year, I've gotten a lot more comfortable with that because of my YouTube channel. But um, I still struggle with it a little bit. And I was just having a lot of resistance to recording something about the subject of what's going on with the world. And I just realized today that part of it is, well, part of it was because I was really, really emotional every time I tried to start doing the video or every time I thought about what I wanted to say, I would get emotional, I would start crying. And um, I just um, wasn't sure that I wanted to do the video. And um, it occurred to me today, I was gonna do it a couple of times today and I changed my mind. And um, it just occurred to me that Part of the reason is because as much as I am oftentimes very comfortable being vulnerable about my own stuff on camera or with my friends, um, I the idea of crying on camera is not something that I cherish. It's not something that I want it to do. And even now I'm struggling just even looking at the camera. So I'm gonna try and focus here. Um, and I think the reason I realized that the reason why I was so uncomfortable, aside from the fact of the vulnerability piece, which is true, but I think part of the reason or the majority of the reason is that this is really not about me. This is about all of us. And I, it, I felt a little, um, I don't know what the right word is, but a little sensitive about coming on camera and starting to cry. So here we go. <laughs> I thought I had it down, but anyways, um, I made some notes just in case this happened, but I was really hoping that um, <clears throat> it wouldn't. So anyways, um, but like I said, I'm not really sure if I'm going to post this, but I'm doing it anyways. So um, I wanted to talk about the events of the last week, um, what happened with George Floyd and all of the riots and protests that have come since um it is a really crazy time in our world and i've had been doing a few videos because of the uh corona well, well the situation <laughs> the virus situation that's going on in the world and um and i i think we were all already stressed out and very sensitive and then um, on the heels of that, this situation comes, and it's not a new situation, it's something that's been happening for a while. Um, I had actually been struggling with my emotions for the last few weeks um, uh, because of uh, the murder of, um, of Brianna Taylor, of Matt Opry. I was just already having, feeling a lot of anger, um, even rage. I was I had made a few pretty angry posts on my Facebook page, which are still there for those of you who um, who have access to my personal Facebook page. And I actually had to edit those many, many times because the first few drafts were just full of curse words uh, because I was just really angry and really fed up. And apparently I wasn't the only one. So by the time the George Floyd thing happened, I was just tapped out um, when it came to um, people being murdered. And um, because it, to me, that's what it is, it was a murder. Um, and this is not new. This is something that's been going on for a long time. This is something that I've been worried about for a long time, but, but actually 
seeing it, I usually try to stay away from those videos, but actually seeing it happen and um, <clears throat> it was very triggering um, because I could really connect with the level of powerlessness and fear and anger and rage that he must have been feeling and that the people around that were watching him get murdered were feeling so <clears throat> so anyways um so it was hard for me and for everybody else to watch that and um, I, like I said, I've been pretty emotional about it, um, and I also had a real hard time after, in the aftermath, uh, being able to empathize or communicate with people who were more concerned about the looting that was happening, and I'm not trying to patch, pass judgment on anybody. I am past that at this point, but uh, during this last week, it was really hard for me to understand I don't like looting. I don't like violence in any way, shape, or form. I wasn't happy about it. I live in Boston, and there was some of that happening here. Not to, there wasn't as much violence as it was in other as there was in other cities, but there was some here. And I understand why people were concerned and why people were upset. But the lack of empathy for the murder of a human being versus and the lack of rage over the murder of a human being versus rage of property being destroyed was um, <clears throat> a little hard for me to handle. Um, especially because some of it was coming from people that I know, people that I know to be kind people, some people in the spiritual community. Um, so I've had a lot of thinking <laughs> to do and a lot of feeling to do over the last week. Um, and I think there was that. There was also this idea that people were talking about some of George Floyd's potential. I don't know if this is true or not. The fact that he may have had a couple of criminal or some sort of criminal past, maybe some, um, I think, misdemeanors on his record and something like that. Um, and this is something that came up with Ahmaud Aubrey and it came up with uh, Breonna Taylor. And it always comes up when these cases happen is people always look for an excuse because that is what it is, an excuse of why this unarmed civilians, unarmed US citizens, unarmed humans, because it really doesn't matter if they're citizens or not, unarmed human beings are being murdered by the very people that are meant to protect us. For those of you who are watching this and do not understand and cannot empathize, I ask if you have had anything in your past, if you've ever had violence perpetrated against you, for those of you who are victims of abuse, whether it's childhood abuse or even domestic abuse, rape, have experienced any sort of violence in your life, think about how powerless, how rageful, how hurt you felt while that was happening. And this is what minorities have to live with on a daily basis, at least in the US. Um, racism is a worldwide problem. This is not something that is limited to the US. I am just, but I've only lived here and in Puerto Rico, so I don't know if the level of violence perpetrated against minorities, especially against the black community, is something that happens worldwide. I believe it is, but I believe it is worse here. I don't know if that's true or not, but ultimately, ultimately, it doesn't matter. There is absolutely zero reason why any human being, let, al let alone a government agency or our law enforcement, should murder or even pull a gun on an unarmed human being. I just don't understand it. I understand that these people 
have a really hard job, that they're putting their lives on the line. But that comes with the territory. That is what you sign up for when you sign up to be a police officer. And I don't want to be insensitive to all the people that may be watching this and may be related to police officers or, or have had family members that are police officers that have been killed in the line of duty. But the truth is that that is what you sign up for. As a citizen, as a civilian, you don't sign up for being murdered by the very people that are meant to protect you. And it is really hard to watch people trying to make excuses for this behavior. It's hard for me. I can understand the intellectual argument of saying that we have no way of knowing that this is racism because in truth, you don't know what is in someone's head. So you don't know for sure. But, you know, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck. And I think an argument that I've been making for the last few days is that for those of us who are minorities, for those of us who've experienced racism, you learn at a very young age, similar to what I was describing earlier with the views, you learn to be incredibly attuned and incredibly sensitive to it because your survival oftentimes depends on that. So what other people may not know or sense as racism, someone that's already had those experiences will see, will feel the truth of that. And there's been many comments and articles and videos that I've watched about the idea that this was all planned, that it is a distraction for something bigger that is going on behind the scenes. And I don't know if that's true or not, but when it comes to this, I have to say that ultimately it really doesn't matter if it was planned or not. Racism is a worldwide problem. And The pain and the fear and the powerlessness that we feel when in situations like that, that George Floyd felt, that others have felt in the past is very real. And to look at myself in the camera. <laughs> um, the gaslighting that these people that we feel is very real. Because I am consistently amazed by how many people can come out and say, oh, this is not racism. You cannot prove this is racism. For those of us who know different, that is gaslighting. And this country has a history of devaluing black lives that dates back to the very origins of our constitution. And I can actually throw all minorities in there, but right now I wanna focus about on the black community. We have been doing this for centuries. And when they protest peacefully, we tell them they can't. When they call it out, we gaslight them and tell them that they're making things up, that it's not racism. So I think it's time for all of us, those of us who are minorities, black, white, black, Latin, Asian, to all stand together. And for those 
of us who are not my or for those of you I should say that are not minorities to stand together we don't all have to agree with everything we don't all have to feel the same way we don't all have to believe the same things or think the same way we are different we have different life experiences so I understand why some white US friends that I have don't understand certain things. I appreciate them asking questions, asking them respectfully. I don't speak for all minorities. I don't speak for the black community. I am just sharing my perspective and how I feel about this. And I appreciate the when questions are asked. I appreciate people providing a different point of view, but I ask for that to be done respectfully. I ask for that to be done without dismissing my perspective of the perspective of other minorities. And at the end of the day, I ask that we all come together on the fact that this was a police officer murdering an unarmed man, that this hasn't been police officers murdering unarmed civilians. <sighs> the pain and the powerlessness that has been inflicted on the black community in this country, all minorities, but especially the black community in this country. Like I said before, dates back to the beginnings, to the origins of our constitution and has been perpetuated generation after generation. And it's time, it's time, it's time that we all come together and we say it's enough. For their sake, for our sake, um, their meaning ours, because I'm including myself in that, um, for all of our sakes. And and we have to do it together. We cannot do this alone. We cannot do this separately. We all have to come together. I understand that not all cops are bad. I understand that there are some good cops, but you cannot call yourself a good cop if you are watching this happen and you are remaining silent. You cannot. I understand that a lot of cops have been speaking out even prior to the the George Floyd thing. Uh, I had seen a few videos of some cops. One got fired, another one that resigned because they were not okay with what was, was happening in this country. I appreciate that. I value that. I value that level of integrity. And I ask that we all do that, not just cops, but every single one of us, that we come into alignment and into integrity with ourselves and understand the value of human life, any human life, and that we stand together against oppression. I don't, I, don't, I really thought I wasn't going to cry. So um, I think I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to look and make sure that I didn't miss anything. Um, yeah. I think that's um, pretty much it. I mean, there's a few other things, but it, it's okay. It doesn't really matter. So anyways, um, I'm going to try not to talk about this again, uh, at least not on camera, unless something else major happens. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this, to watch this video. And um, I hope you are all well, you are all staying healthy, and you are all taking care of yourselves and your loved ones emotionally, mentally, in every single way. 
because we are living through very, very hard times, but I still have hope that we can shift this, that we can shift this for the best and that we can create the world that we all deserve and the world that we all desire. So until next time.